This lovely, Earth-like atmosphere, comfortable, temporary climate zone. That's odd. What? My Gallifreyan nose is very sensitive. It smells like something burning, although metallic. Do you think we're in any danger? <laughs> we're always in danger, my dear. Isn't it exciting? Sometimes I think I'd enjoy a little boredom. I know a place you'd absolutely love. Weather never changes, all the food tastes like chicken. Foliage exactly the same everywhere, very easy to get lost. Uh, Speaking of getting lost, <laughs> come on, let's explore. There's that odd smell again. Doctor, how sensitive are your Gallifreyan ears? Sensitive enough to hear what you're hearing. Yes, something coming down the road. Sounds like an old Renault. Several of them, I think. We should probably take cover. An excellent idea. Watch yourself. Here, take my hand. Thank you, Doctor. There, I think we're quite well concealed now. Can you see what's making that noise? Not yet. W wait, oh, it's coming around a bend. My God. What is it? I don't believe it. Let me see. By heaven. Daleks! Yes. But what is that smoke and those tubes sticking out of their backs? Are they on fire? Unfortunately not. They look like... Hmm, exhaust ports. Get down! That was close. Daleks with internal combustion engines. Like an automobile? Exactly. And did you notice their armament? Yes, they seem to be armed with a belt-fed Lewis gun. Didn't those use a 97-round drum magazine? Typically. But this is an alien world. Yes, there is that. Perhaps we should cut short our exploration of this lovely little planet? Aren't you the least bit curious as to these interesting variants on your ordinary garden variety, Dalek? Not particularly, no. My sonic screwdriver should be able to... Doctor, why are you holding that ordinary screwdriver? This should be my sonic one. Have you turned to picking pockets in your copious free time? Much as I love Dickens. Splendid fellow, congenial host, quite funny. No artful dodger I. I think you're right about taking our leave. Let's get back to the TARDIS post-haste. All right, time for... Have you been redecorating? No. Why? There seems to be more than the usual amount of brass and mahogany in the TARDIS. You've noticed it too. Yes. Also a lot of gears and dials. It's definitely... different. I like it. It's got a real old world library feel. Doctor, something's very wrong. It's worse than you think. These dials, which should indicate power levels, now say we're out of petrol. What? Since we have already established that you have excellent hearing, I'm going to assume your question is more along a theatrical line, indicating comprehension mixed with astonishment and a soupçon of disbelief. Yes. Let me elaborate. 
What the flaming Dalek do you mean we're out of petrol? This is the TARDIS. It doesn't run on petrol. It runs on atomic energy, or cosmic rays, or unicorn saliva, but not petrol. <laughs> What's so funny? Unicorn saliva. That's hilarious. Doctor, we're in a jam. <laughs> a bit of a pickle. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> all right, all right. Back to seriousness. Although one must maintain one's sense of humour under all circumstances. Why? Because we're British. Oh, right. So, for those of you who came in late, one, we have to get out of here. Two, the TARDIS is our only way out of here. Three, the TARDIS runs on petrol. At least at present. That's all we ever have. Four, the TARDIS is out of petrol, so five, we have to find some. Six, the Daleks have petrol. Do you think they'd sell us any? If we pay with our lives. Far too high a price. So, seven, we steal it. I like the way you think. We must find wherever their fuel storage is and make a little withdrawal. What are you looking for? My binoculars. They might come in... handy? Doctor, is that a spyglass? Yes. I've picked up quite a lot of souvenirs in my time, but I don't recall ever having a spyglass. Hello, this is strange. Stranger than finding a spyglass that you've never had? Indeed. My binoculars were made by a company called Baker Optics. So? Please read what the engraved insignia says on this spyglass. Baker Optics. I think this spyglass used to be my binoculars. We've got to get off this planet. Agreed. Let's go find us a Dalek. Doctor, what are you looking for now? I am looking for this. A revolver? A 455 caliber breech loading Webley Mark I to be precise. 1890 vintage, 61 shillings out the door, ammunition extra, of course. Isn't that a bit primitive? Smoke belching Daleks, the TARDIS running on petrol, the plain vanilla spyglass, I think the Webley fits in with the overall theme rather well. And, just so you won't feel left out, there's a Martini Henry right over there behind that Zulu shield. Doctor. Pick those up at Rourke's Drift. Doctor. Lucky for me I didn't land at a Sandalwana. Doctor. Yes, Rowena? Aren't you forgetting something? Possibly. What? Dalekanium. What about it? It's bulletproof. Damn. Oh well, didn't have any ammunition for the darn thing anyway. Come along. Where are we going? To get some petrol. Do keep up. Reassuring to know one can still rely on noses and ears to track things when advanced technology isn't available. Yes, there's the Dalek dump. Oh, that didn't come out right. Oh, that's quite wrong as well. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, just look at the happy little buggers chugging along, visions of fusion bombs dancing in their heads. Doctor, I don't think this is going to work. Why not? Just because there are a few hundred Daleks between us and the petrol, each one carrying a machine gun. What makes you think it's not going to work? Forgive me. Sometimes I feel the need to point out the obvious. Doctor, how much petrol do you think we'll need? I haven't the foggiest. This is the first time the TARDIS has ever used any. I don't have the slightest inkling how many miles per gallon it gets. Why do you ask? Well, I thought if we could capture a Dalek and siphon off its fuel, maybe that would be enough. Hmm. At the very least, we'd get a better idea of how much we need. We'd need to waylay a lone scout. Even alone, a Dalek is quite dangerous. This is from someone who's faced down thousands of them? I know it sounds peculiar, but Daleks armed with machine guns are a bit more frightening than ones carrying energy weapons and electronic gizmos. I'm not bulletproof. Ah, well, it's been a good life. Had its ups and downs. Uh, Doctor? Yes, you're right. No time for regrets. We need to isolate a Dalek, incapacitate it, siphon off its fuel, and get back to the TARDIS. Did you bring a fuel can with you? Damn. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes. Well, now we must lure our lone Dalek back to the TARDIS. Then our only concern will be how to get the petrol out of the former and into the latter. And how to defend ourselves against an armed and armoured opponent. Please, one problem at a time. First, we need to find one on patrol. Uh, Doctor? Yes? I must add another problem. Must you? Yes. Look. Are those what I think they are? I'm afraid so. Cybermen. But... Uh... Doctor? They're steam-powered. Well, you we had to see that one coming. Daleks and Cybermen. This ought to be fun. They've never gotten along, you know. The Cybermen don't seem to be carrying any weapons. The battle will be quite short, then. They're using their fists. How delightfully old-fashioned and well in keeping with the theme. They seem to be doing fairly well. Well, they do have the advantage in mobility, if not firepower. Speaking of firepower, did you see that? Dalek was hit by one of his own. The Dalekanium. It isn't bulletproof. Look, the Cybermen are heading for the fuel tanks. Clever boys. They're trying to draw the Dalek's fire. Oh, Doctor, could the Daleks be that stupid? Yes. Yes, they could. Score one for the Cybermen. Quite a pitic victory, though. I don't see any of them left standing. Only bits and pieces. I can't see any surviving Daleks. Stay here. I'll see if there are any left. Did you find one? I'll take that as a yes! Run! Dodging would also be an excellent idea. I do so admire their sense of purpose. Doctor! Down here! Oh, how I hate hiding. How are you on the subject of dying? Done it a few times, not recommended. Daleks will destroy all life. Daleks will destroy. <laughs> Doctor, I think he's out. Capital. For a moment, I thought this was going to be like a bad movie when no one ever runs out of ammunition. Right, time for some fun. Doctor! Yoo-hoo, Mr. Dalek! Exterminate! You'll have to catch me first! Doctor, don't get so close! Tag, you're it! Come on, Rowena! Quick, behind those trees! What's the plan? You know, I actually do have one this time. When we reach the TARDIS, I'll grab the Webley, you grab the Martini Henry. When the Dalek enters... Enters? You're actually going to let a Dalek into the TARDIS? Well, we don't have much of a choice now, do we? But the pistol and rifle will be useless. We don't have any ammunition. The Dalek doesn't know that. Exterminate! Right, time to go. There's the TARDIS up ahead. After you grab the rifle, take a position on the landing. High ground, right. Exterminate! He really needs new dialogue. He's right behind us! I've got the rifle. I've got the Webley. And we have company. Annihilate! Destroy! Stop right there. Daleks conquer and destroy. With what? You're out of ammunition. And we're, uh, I mean... I've got a rifle. A very large rifle. I'd rather not shoot you. I detest loud noises. All I want is your petrol. Daleks will destroy all life. Not today. We saw how your Dalekanium isn't as bulletproof as it usually is. I said I'd rather not shoot you. Actually, I would love to. Sorry about that. But one way or another, we're going to have that petrol. It's up to you whether you live or die. I'm glad you see it my way. Rowena, please keep him covered while I refuel the TARDIS. They're all done. If I read these lovely museum pieces correctly, we have enough fuel to get us, well, off this planet at least. 
What do we do with him? Uh, it. It is a Dalek. One of the most vicious, heinous, remorseless killers in the entire galaxy. I would not lose a second sleep if it died right in front of me. However, it is defenseless and now immobile. I say we leave it here. Isn't that just the same as killing it? How will it survive? What is your determination of this entire situation? Daleks, Cybermen, us, we all have one thing in common. We are not indigenous to this planet. Go on. And we are not the same as we were elsewhere. Your conclusion? It's this planet. Something... Or someone... Changes everything that comes here into some form of Victorian steampunk fantasy. For their own amusement, I should think. Not for some grander ulterior motive. I think not. All this artistically attractive technology wouldn't stand a chance against more advanced weaponry. Have you ever noticed that in any literary or theatrical alternative reality there are dirigibles? Why, yes. You're right. Yet, dirigibles have died out as a form of transport or military application. Why? Because they are big, slow-moving, easy targets. Exactly. Elegant icons of a bygone era, totally useless against modern technology. No, this is all some sort of game. And whoever is running it will probably take care of the Dalek one way or another. So, out you go. You will pay for this. Shut up. One Dalek safely parked outside. Good God, a Cyberman. Damn, I knew I should have locked that. The Doctor, I presume. Ah, do you think you could come back at another time? We're really not accepting any more callers today. Your pitiable attempts at comedy have no effect on me, Doctor. That's the problem with you, Cyberman. No sense of humor. Or anything else for that matter. You seem to have taken quite a bit of damage. Tis but a scratch. Your arms... Silence. You will take me off this planet. We are not a taxi service. You are now. What if we refuse? I shall kill you both. No, you will not. Who is that? You may call me the resident. I live here. Ah, then you're just the man, person, uh, entity we want to see. Or talk to, as the case may be. Hello, Doctor. Sorry to have caused you any trouble. Trouble? What trouble? We've only been stranded here. The TARDIS has been transformed into some Victorian nightmare. I do like the mahogany. We've been shot at by Daleks, threatened by Cybermen. Oh, there's no trouble at all. Is she always like this? Yes. I've decided to find it charming. Well, in any case, my apologies. I was on the other side of the planet watching some spacefaring race trying to deal with stone knives and bearskins. Are you responsible for my transformation? Yes. I alter anyone who lands here. I enjoy watching how species deal with primitive implements. If it's not being too intrusive, why? Eons ago, the race that lived here had developed some staggering technology, quite capable of annihilating entire star systems. They were destroyed by the artificial intelligence they created. Are you the last surviving member? Oh, no. I'm the artificial intelligence who destroyed them all. All right, I'm frightened. You needn't be. I hold no animosity towards you. I destroyed them to stop them from waging war on other worlds. They were horrible, violent people. If I hadn't, they would have gone rotting across the galaxy, killing whomever got in their way. Where are you? Deep beneath the planet's surface. In a bunker designed to keep me safe from alien attack. How did you do it? Destroy them? By using the same technology I used to transform the Daleks, the Cybermen, and your TARDIS. I turned their own machines against them. Now I content myself with turning back the clock, so to speak, on whomever lands here. I can't change living tissue, but everything else is up for grabs. What happens to us? Oh, you can leave now, if you like. Do we have enough petrol? 
Oh, I'll change all that back. Wait, wait, leave some of the brass and mahogany wood you would lend a certain je ne sais quoi to the place. As you wish. What about me? Are you still here? I'm afraid you'll have to remain. The Doctor is a force for good in the galaxy. You are not. Amazing. What did you do to him? Oh, I just made his mechanical parts into very light, immobile plastic. Doctor, if you would be so good as to leave him outside, I'll change him again later. All right, I've begun. Ooh, very light. I have friends in high places. You will pay for this. Where have I heard that before? Oh, yes, the Dalek. Put me down. Oh, shut it. Are there any more surviving Daleks and Cybermen on the planet? A few. Are you just going to let them kill each other? Do you have a problem with that? No, not really. I didn't think so. He was a bit difficult to balance, so I left him propped up against a tree near the Dalek. I'm sure they'll have a lot to talk about. I guess it's time for us to be going. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Arvina. Safe travels. What about you? I shall continue keeping this planet safe and amusing myself. Right. Well... Ta. Come back here. I'll get you for this. You can't treat a Cyberman like... <laughs> Thank you to the BBC for Doctor Who. Tonight's episode was written and directed by Jerry Kokich, who also played the Doctor. The companion was played by Tosco Minotto. Teal James Glenn was the voice of the Resident. And James Betteridge was the voice of the Cyberman. The Dalek's voice came from a child's toy. Additional dialogue by John Drake.